Alright, welcome to the... I don't even know which episode this is. But anyway, in this episode we are going to do something that we've all been kind of waiting for. I'm always making such a drama out of everything. But anyway, I got the uh, game how it is right here. And if we click the play buttons and we go into this kind of test thing we got here. Um, we see, oh, that's all fine. We have some box to the physics simulation going on and everything's... Uh, cool and this sh thing is jumping around but wait in your game this would probably suck because you don't want this 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 lines I mean they're looking fine and you can see where everything is but in your game this makes no sense so we want to get actually some sprites on these box to the simulation stuff here um, okay I should stop playing around with this and actually get <laughs> get going so this is the play screen that we have right now. Uh, if I didn't change anything, I hope. Yeah, it looks like I didn't. And yeah, let's go ahead and do this. So how do we actually let like the concept? What is the concept of what we're going to do? Um, actually, let's start with the problem. And the problem is that we could we would we would think we would just go to the to the box and here to the box body let's actually go ahead and then we have this box dot yes come on eclipse box dot oh yeah it crashed great and there we go bot dot set user data and this takes some object and is pretty much nothing by default there is nothing in it's like no, uh, not. But we can put anything in. So why do I have to type this? Um, we can put anything in there and make this something useful for us. Um, so normally we would think, oh, let's put some sprite in, so that we have the sprite that we can draw. But there is one problem, and that is that the sprite is in pixels, but box 2 d is doing stuff in meters so if we would try to draw that is actually confusing if we would try to draw the sprite from the body's user data that we set right here um, we would get some pretty big image not related to the body at all but let's actually start with putting some image in this user data of the box um, let's call this box sprite or something and then let's get a sprite right here call it box sprite equals new sprite actually let's declare the sprite up there so we can dispose it later private sprite box sprite there we go down here again do our imports and this gonna equal a new sprite which is taking a new texture and for this I got a nice uh, image of Luigi so image Luigi front.png if I remember correctly yeah here is Luigi from the front um, I took Luigi because Mario is so hyped so let's go with Luigi um, so alright, we got this sprite and actually let's dispose it. Uh box sprite dot get texture dot dispose. Alright. So finally, um God the code is so big I have no orientation. So we got this sprite right here and we put the sprite into the so called user data of the body, which in this case is the box. So that's great, but just putting something in there doesn't do anything because this is really just an empty field that the body actually doesn't care about whole box to d doesn't care about it it's just for us to put stuff in it and nothing's gonna happen with it unless we do it so to draw the sprite we would actually like to go into the render method and to the place where we are actually drawing stuff so where is this um, right now there is nothing like this at all because we just have the debug renderer so let's create a sprite batch like there we don't have one yet and we have to initialize this thing somewhere 
like there is good. Fine. And the imports, okay. So now we can actually go ahead and say batch dot draw uh, batch dot begin batch dot end. And in this place, we want to do all the bugs to the drawing stuff. So at first, we would like to get all the sprites that we put into the user data of whatever bodies. So we need some way to get all the um, yeah to get all the bodies. And where are they? They are in the world. So let's get them from the world and um, yeah do some stuff with them. So a simple for loop is good for this and we'll say for body body from and now you think world dot get bodies but actually uh, for most of you this is probably going to work fine if you just say get bodies and it's going to return an array of bodies but in the latest version of libgdx which i re always recommend to use it's a little bit different you have to give it an actually an array so this is going to be the array called bodies, and this is not going to happen here in the for loop, but this is going to here, uh, going to happen right here. So let's go ahead and create this bodies array. Private array of bodies. Bodies. Let's actually call this temporary bodies because they're just used to uh, get the user data and draw it. And this is going to equal a new array for bodies. And there we go. So now we got this array of bodies here already. Um, well, dot get bodies, temp bodies, temp bodies. So world dot get bodies looks like a getter, and it actually actually is a getter, but it just takes all the bodies in the world and puts them into the array that we put in here. So yeah, actually, does it put them? Or does it set them in there? Because if it... Okay, whatever. What did I just do? Oh, cool. Okay, it clears them every time we put it in. So it puts them in and makes sure there's nothing else in there. So we can just say all the bodies in there. And then we can iterate over them. So we iterate over them and we say um, if the user data of the body, body dot get user data, um, is an instance of sprite. We want to draw this. So how do we draw this? At first, we have to get the sprite. Sprite sprite equals body dot get user data, and cast this to a sprite. Oops, not like this. Um, then we have to set the position of the sprite to the position of the body. We also have to set the rotation to body dot get angle, but the angle is in radians, which is a unit that I didn't even know before. But uh, that's no problem. We can just go ahead and multiply it by math utils, which is a class of libgdx. Um, radians two degrees. So if you apply any radian uh, by this, we will get the respective degrees number. Um, and then we can go ahead and draw this one with the sprite batch. Okay, so this was fast. Um, at first, we create a temporary array of bodies. Then we go ahead and clear this out, which is all done in this uh, get bodies method, and put all the bodies from the world in there. Then we see, <laughs> sorry, we see for each body in this temp bodies array if the user data of um, the body is an instance of sprite and actually get user data isn't null because otherwise we're going to get a null pointer exception probably I don't even want to try it out so we see if there is some user data in there and then we see if the user data is an instance of sprite so if that is an instance of sprite we uh, think that's probably because we wanted to draw it later um, so we take the sprite, just like yeah, like this makes sense. Um, set the position to the position of the body. 
set the rotation to the rotation of the body and draw it on the sprite batch. Um, yeah, all in batch begin, batch should end, and that is basically it. But like I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned, there is going to be some problems. So let's just go ahead and try this out. We are going to see the problems in just a few seconds. Play, play, and there you have it. What is this? Well, at first, I totally messed it up because well, I forgot to say batch dot set projection matrix camera dot combined. Just like the debug renderer needs the camera dot combined uh, projection matrix, our sprite batch obviously does as well because it should draw stuff in the same way. So now we see that we actually don't see even see the Luigi. Where is he? Let's zoom out a bit. And what is that? There's one big Luigi right there. Um, the rotation is working fine. Okay, that's good. You see it's always the same rotation as the box uh, 2D thing right there. But at first, what's with this size and what's with this position? That's not how it's supposed to be. Um, so yeah, this is because, uh, like I said, this box to d stuff here is all handling things in meters. So actually, this box right there is, like we said, um, it is just here, one meter wide. Remember, this is the half height, uh, half width, and the half height. It's just one meter wide and uh, two meters high. So if this is one by two meters. And this sprite <laughs> is measured in pixels. That means that every pixel here, which is the unit one, is going to uh, be as wide as one meter on this thing. So we can actually compare this and see, yeah, that's correct. One of these pixels is around the size of the width of this box to the body. So we need some way to convert from these pixels, well, actually, yeah, however we want to do it, um, to convert between these pixels and the box 2D meters. Um, now, again, there is something that is very common, and that is to have this, like I mentioned earlier, um, you usually take a final float or something and call it pixels to meters, and then you say like uh, 32, so 32 pixels would be in one box to d meter, but like I said some earlier episode, I don't like this method really. So I just like to do thing everything in box to d units, so I can just imagine perfectly how the game is working. And to do this, I have to adjust some stuff when we set the user data of the box right there. So we set the user data of the box to this box sprite, but there's something wrong with this box sprite, and that is that it's just incredibly big, as we just saw. Um, what we want to do is we want to take the the sprite, and we know that everything is now in box 2D meters because yeah, you saw it. The sprite has a width of 129 pixels, and it was like 129 meters wide. So we just want to set the size of it. So, yeah, it looks the way it should. I hope you get along with my kind of explanation here. But anyway, all that we want to do is to set it to the same size as the box. The box actually is, and that is, as we see right here, one meter wide and two meters high. So, one right there and two right there. And that's it. Yeah, that's actually it for now. So let's open this up again. Or actually, we can make this a little bit more clear because this is saying dot five f. We have to take it times two because right here, I, I remember you again. It's the half width and the half height when we handle the shape stuff there. So one times two. This just makes it a little bit more clear, a little bit more easy to read. And this is already looking a lot better. I mean, he's still doing some weird stuff, 
and I actually just messed up. Great. He's still doing some weird stuff and not really at the correct position, but he is being drawn on the body. Um, yeah, that's already fine. Oops, <laughs> I love playing around with this. But we want to change at first. Ah, God damn it. At, at first we want to change his position because right now he's standing in the middle and he should actually be standing down there. And the rotation is also kind of weird. This is because the origin is still set to pixels. So at first let's take care of the position. We have to do this right here because right now we are setting the position to the body dot get position dot x and the body position on the y axis. So the body position, to remind you again, is in the middle of the body. So it is no wonder that Luigi is drawn on the middle on the middle point of the body, because that is where the body position is. But for drawing sprites, you are actually beginning in the bottom left in libgdx. So we somehow have to set this point to that point down there. Let's do this. Um, pretty simple actually. We just want to take the body position, so the center point basically, and subtract sprite width divide by 2. You are probably familiar with this already from some other games that you wrote or whatever. Um, there we actually are, he's in the middle. Still he's not really looking perfectly in the middle because of some very little rotation actually. But that's the next thing that we want to fix. So there's Luigi approximately at the correct position on the body. Um, the next thing that we have to change is already down here again. Um, where is it? There. Box sprite set size. So we set the size of the sprite to the box 2D meters, but we didn't set the origin. And what the origin is, is basically just the point of the sprite around which it should be rotated and scaled. So we set the origin. Here we see it. Sets the origin in relation to the sprite's position for scaling and rotation. Rotation is what we are interesting at it. Uh, what we are interested in. So let's set the origin to basically just the middle of the sprite, just like it has been before. But we changed the middle of the sprite because it, the sprite is now a different size. So let's change it back to the middle of the sprite. So box sprite dot get width divide by two and box sprite dot get height divide by two. That's it. We set the or the origin back into the middle of the resized sprite. And there we go. Oluigi is perfectly drawn just where he should. Alright, so now that you know how to draw sprites on box 3D bodies, um, it's time for some shameless self-promotion again. So I just want to introduce to you a little class now that I wrote that makes this whole drawing process a little bit way easier. <laughs> um, of course, for the series, you can decide if in this series, in the future, in the future episodes, uh, we are going to use this method that I just explained to you, or the one that I'm going to introduce to you right now. Uh, I don't want to force this on anybody, and it's actually better to learn using this one here that I just explained the whole episode long. But anyway, um, just for you to know that it exists and for you to have the possibility to use it, I'm going to introduce to you the class that I wrote called Fixture Spread right now. So at first, let's get rid of all of the stuff that we did, of pretty much all of it, of all of this, and of this, and pretty much everything. Um, and then we can just go into the internet and yeah, go on my website. In case you don't know the URL, it's themfn.beplaced.net and you end up right here. Then we can go into the menu, go into the libgx utils thing here and I'm just going to download the compiled jar. Save that somewhere. Yeah, there we go. Where did you save it? 
my computer is so fast it's amazing okay there he saved it let's put this guy on the desktop paste paste wait all right so this is just a jar um, this is like a very little mini library I don't even think if it's worth to be called library but anyway you go and copy this guy into your project into the libs folder then I have to put it on the build path libraries add jars black point two libs what where are there uh, okay so fine now it's on the build path and we can use the stuff in it um, so what we can just do instead of all that I just explained to you is to just go ahead and not set this to the boxes you later but to the one of the sprites so remember that the create fixture method just like the create body method returns a fixture we, we could say fixture box fixture equals this but instead of doing this we can also just is a um, it says the fixture directly and say set user data because not just the body but also the fixtures have user data and inside there we can put a new fixture sprite which is the class that I am promoting right now um, and put the box sprite in there of course we have to put the box sprite creation before we are actually doing this and import the fixture sprite great so now that this is done uh, remember that actually all we did right now to draw stuff is we created the stuff that we want to draw and we put it into the fixtures user data and the other thing that we just have to do is to call fixture sprite static method uh, dot draw on the batch and we give it the world so this is going to render all the fixture sprites in fixture user data in the world on the batch if that makes any sense. Um, so let's just start this up and see if we get the same result as we just did. Yes. Starts up and play. And yes, we actually want to play. And there he is. It's the same result that we just had. So this just uh, reduced down code, I don't know, like 8 or 10 lines. Um, I use it in my projects uh, and now it's your decision you can use it in your own projects you cannot use it in your own projects it's basically just taken all the work away from you but also taken all the learning away from you because just using my stuff isn't really going to uh, teach you anything and you also have to rely on my stuff to be good and <laughs> fine for what you want to do so it's your decision if you want to use it or not and you can actually go ahead and put in the comments if we are going to use this in the series it's I, I don't care you can say oh come on they do it that simple and I don't really care about how this is actually done and what blah 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 I don't care I just wanna get my sprites on the screen then you can vote for like <sighs> all this vote stuff you can just write in the comments um, in the series in the future please use this fixture sprite or you say, dude, we're here for tutorials and not for using the stuff that you wrote and for your promotion. So please teach us how to do stuff properly and without any further help. And that would be just the way that I explained it to you earlier. So in case I don't get enough votes or whatever, I'm going to do it without this. So just the way that I explained to you before. And in case you want to do it with this, fine, we're going to do it with it. Um, so anyway... Um, I hope you got along with the explanations that I made in this episode and that everything is fine. Um, thanks for watching and I hope I'll see you in the next episode.